right, let's get everything started. How's everybody doing today? Thank you for joining me on such short notice. Got a really, really, really exciting one for you. And it's going to explain why I've been kind of absent these past few months. I mean, I've been out and about. You've seen me. It's not like I completely disappeared, but... Haven't been live streaming or anything like that. I've just been way too busy. And you're about to see why. So let's just wait for everybody to filter in. Let me know how you're doing in chat. Let's see if everything uh, looks and sounds good. Quick sound check. Hey, Frozen Kebab. Appreciate it, man. Nice to have you here. Hey, Dr. Aeronautics. Nice to see you, buddy. Yep, there's a lot of fixes. It's pretty big. It's not all-inclusive. Didn't have enough time for that, but uh, I'm really, really happy with uh, what I was able to accomplish. Hopefully you guys appreciate it, too. It actually makes, makes this route playable, which uh, is something I've wanted all along. Because I put so much work into the track, I think I did... Uh, maybe combined between the track and career scenarios, we're talking like maybe 150, 160-ish hours. So to have that go to waste because of bad signaling is um, a shame. So I wanted to redeem the route in a way. So we'll talk about all that. This took me more time than, way more time than the, uh, the track did. Way more time. Hundreds of hours. I didn't even log it all, but uh, if I was going to guess, I'd probably say maybe around 300 hours of work. No, Pixelate, I'm just doing some quick little talk and uh, seeing how everything looks and sounds. You didn't miss anything, buddy. Nice to see you, by the way. Oh, hey, Noah, nice uh, of you to join. And thanks for all of your uh, signal advice over the past few months. Let's give it another minute or so for people to join and then we'll uh, go over everything. Once I submit all this stuff to Dovetail, then I can finally focus more on the uh, Transom World 2 stuff. I've been neglecting that a little bit. Hey, AJ Diz, thanks, man. Alright, sweet. So, I whipped up a PowerPoint presentation. Nothing too fancy. Um, just something to go over all this stuff in a nice organized format. One sec. I'm just looking to see how it would look. It didn't capture it in full screen, which is fine. You can see everything fine like this. Um, all right. So the signal script changes. And if anybody has any questions while I'm explaining this, please feel free to just type it in chat and I'll get to it. So the whole issue with the signals, the big issue with the signals was that the core of the signal functionality was screwed up big time. And the majority of those problems were caused by the signals not being prepared properly. Now, preparedness is a signaling term in the game code that refers to trains being within dispatch range of the signal, like X number of signals away. And uh, it means that the, there's a train kind of close. 
and preparedness of zero, meaning there's no train nearby, should imply a stop signal. There were issues with how preparedness was incrementing and decrementing, the values would run away, so even after a train passed and it shouldn't be prepared, it was still prepared and it was a mess. Um, you guys may have noticed that when you're playing the route, you're driving by signals that have no trains being routed through them, yet they're more favorable than a stop, just like a random clear signal sitting out in the middle of nowhere. All of that's been resolved because I've reined in this whole preparedness issue. Um, there's a lot more signal messages being passed up and down the line now. A lot of different messages. And I don't know if it's going to impact CPU usage at all, but there's a lot of communication now. The signals are talking properly, they're giving each other all the relevant information. It's really, really good. And there were issues with how the home signal links were getting messages. So if you don't know, when you place a signal in a route, um, an interlocking signal or something that's going to control your way through a junction or a series of junctions, you put links for each possible path. So what was happening was messages from signals ahead were hitting these links but going to the wrong ones. So I had to recode all that communication to ensure that it was hitting the correct link every time. That was why in Washington, right around there, you'd have like random restricting signals everywhere where the train wasn't even getting routed to. That was because these messages were hitting the wrong links. Yes, creating scenarios will be a lot easier now because the train, you're, the way you route it, those are the signals that are gonna get activated and prepared now, not all these random ones. So big changes that way. Um, another big thing, is the dispatch range has been increased from four to nine signals. So the dispatch range is like, let's say I start behind a signal. That signal and the next three beyond it are going to get preparedness. Now, because I'm adding all these block points and code change points and all this other stuff, there are a lot more signals in a shorter distance. So I had to increase the dispatch distance to nine. Um, yeah. So an example of that is you got your train spawning in the beginning, and then you have your first signal with preparedness nine, and then eight, then seven, then six, and there's a progression. Once you get to four or whatever, you'll be advanced approach, and then approach medium 45, and then approach, and then restricting, and then stop. There's a progression to this. Yeah, so uh, trains will be dispatched up to nine signals ahead, which is nice. The existing route that you guys have has approximately 300 signals, a little bit more than that, and the revised copy of the route has just under 500 signals, and all those new signals are code change points, those invisible signals as Dovetail Games likes to call them, just the track circuitry. Another great feature, a lot of people were looking forward to this, I'm glad I was able to make it happen, are that locomotive cab signals will now change mid-block. This is huge. So in the existing route, the cab signals will only upgrade when the front of the loco passes a wayside signal. And the way that they had signals placed, you could be going like two miles, a mile and a half before you get to the next signal, and that's not correct at all. So if you, for some reason, had like approach medium in the cab, and you're supposed to be clear now, but because the next signal's not for another mile and a half away, um you're going to be riding approach medium all the way until you get to that next signal. So what will happen now is whenever you're traveling down the route, whenever you pass a signal, that signal will send a message to the next signal that's saying, hey, buddy, you're next. You now have authority to influence the train's cab signals. So when a train has the authority, I mean, excuse me, when the signal has the authority to influence the cab signals, it will take whatever it's displaying, whether it be clear, advanced approach, cab speed, whatever, and based on what signal type it is and what it's displaying, it will send a message back to the locomotive. And that's what will be dynamically displayed in the cab. The caveat is the train has to be within 0.78 miles of the signal for that to work. Because the signal will only get, will start sending those messages back if you're within that distance. It's just a game engine limitation, I can't override it. Uh, Pixelate asks, 
Will all these improvements and changes be applied to Washington to Philadelphia as well since that route is a clone in addition to- Yes. Yes. It shouldn't be an issue. Um, my only concern is importing all the track over so it's seamless. We'll, we'll see how we're we'll see how we're gonna handle it. But my plan was to make to go to approach Dovetail Games, say, "Hey, I'll fix this. St give me the source files. I'll fix this and release it as a patch." And they're like, "Yeah, no problem." So that's kind of what we did. So this stuff will become the actual signal script that the root and any clones or whatever will be able to use and you'll be able to use this signal scripting in other roots too so it'll be official it's an official patch it's going to be um once i get these files over to them and they can sort it out uh, another quick little feature i made was signals now have a slight delay before changing to stop when the train passes them this is an attempt to mimic the real-world delay of track circuitry detecting that the train is now in its block. So it's not a time-based thing, it's not like, oh, half a second goes by and then the track circuitry picks it up and the signal switches to stop. It's just a set distance based on um, what type of signal it is. Like, if you're going to go through it at high speed, it's between like 25 and 30 meters. Medium speed and like 15 to 20 meters and it's just when the front of the train passes that and reaches that threshold the signal will s switch over to stop And uh, what's cool now is that I fixed the signal core these scripts are very very adaptable To other types of signals on the Northeast corridor whether it be like a tri-light signal between New Haven and Boston or a Metro North signal a, a lot of this core stuff can be transferred over to make these signals better and then they can all be programmed to intercommunicate. It's very simple to expand upon it. So, locomotive stuff. Very, very limited. All I did really was adjust the cab signaling systems to accommodate the new aspects that I introduced. Because I expanded on clear, approach medium, and cab speed a little bit. So, instead of just having clear, you know, have clear 150, clear 125, and clear 100. Um, I think I also put cab speed 100 in there. I think that's a future enhancement. It's not used in the script at all other than just like a variable um, Added approach medium 30. So yeah, the locomotives needed a couple variables tweaked in order to understand what those mean um, The ACF 64 specifically cab speed now properly shows up on the display before it was just a blank display and it just showed 80 um, as the maximum authorized speed. It actually says cab speed now, and the light flashes. Uh, Non-existent cab signal aspects like medium approach would show up on there. Um, that's gone. The ATC and access lights now properly illuminate depending on which of those safety systems is enforcing the prescribed speed. And the Metro North lights, you know, like the green N, the red R, those have been turned off in this territory because those signals, those types of things don't activate outside of Metro North territory. And for the Acela Express, the only thing I had to fix was that approach and approach medium now have the correct signal speeds. That's pretty much all I had to fix. That one was pretty basic. With respect to the route, I added code change points in all relevant locations. This means your block points without wayside signals, at the ends of interlockings, etc. All those places now have code change points where they actually are in real life. Also added some extra signal relay huts. Uh, that's just decoration stuff. There were missing signals at the end of some of the Washington tracks. Those are now added. So... That was big. Adjusted the home signal links in various locations. Some of them, it was weird. Like, there were sidings that branch off the main line just beyond uh, an interlocking, for instance, and they were extending the signal's influence to protect that junction as well. Even though it, it's not. It's not supposed to be. So that's been fixed. That was messing things up big time. And then uh, just tweaked the link speeds of various signals to get the aspects that 
are supposed to be there. Like, there were some areas in Washington that had no uh, uh, link speed, and it would become a clear signal, and I was confused. Like, it looks like slow clear, but my cab signals are clear. Oh, I need to force it to be 15 miles an hour, so the script picks up, hey, this should be slow clear, not actually clear, and my cabs go down to restricting instead, which is what we want. Yeah, Noah, um, I'm hoping Ryan can easily adapt all this stuff to make open any C work. Yeah, it should be good. Um, the scenarios required a little bit of tweaking, just a few little tweaks here and there because of some of the signal changes, mostly just train priority things that got a little wonky, but uh, easily fixable. So they'll have to do this. I can't touch this kind of stuff because of the PI file that gets shipped with uh, the root, preventing people from making changes to the uh, career scenarios. So they'll have to make these couple changes. And there are some known issues, some stuff that I've been tracking um, that you'll notice. The cab signals, for instance, may not dynamically update if the train's at a complete stop. So for some reason, the detection mechanism for a train being behind the signal that may not be called if the train's at a complete stop and it's a core game issue, there's nothing I can do about it. So the workaround is just to start moving the train, even like a pixel will fix it and get it updated. Hey, what's up, Ryan? Nice to see you, man. Uh, the Acela Express, there is no signal speed displayed when the cab signal is clear. I tried messing with the script, and I can't get it to display 150 or 125, whatever clear aspect you're running under. I, I tried. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with the script. Um, but hey, at least everything else works great. The ACS64, some of the text on the ADU is incorrect. There's a photo that Dovetail uses. It, it's like a static image, and they'll take coordinates. Oops, is the train going by? Uh, they'll take coordinates, I think, from that image of like, oh, if it's clear, get the section of photo with this, and it was the clear section, and I couldn't update the image to display things like clear 125 or cab speed 80, so it's just clear cab speed. It's really not that big of a deal. Oops. Um, like I was mentioning before, the freight sidings that branch off the main line, they were using interlocking signals to protect those and it just wasn't working out, and I didn't have enough time to come up with like a custom signal solution for controlling those junctions. So if you're making a freight scenario on the route, just go at restricted speed and ignore the waysides. The signals coming off of the siding back onto the main line, those dwarfs should be fine. There shouldn't be any issues there. But as far as far as like the main line signals interacting with those junctions, they ignore the state they don't even care about them. What's nice is they're not used anyway in any of the scenarios, so this is mainly a mainline passenger operation focused type route, so not designed around freight in the first place, but just to let you know. Um, there was no time to focus on the functionality of ATC and access, such as alarms, braking curves, penalty applications, so none of this has changed. It's all default. Sorry, I had no time. And these changes are not perfect by any means. I put a lot of work and testing into making them as workable and bug-free as possible, but nothing's perfect, so if you discover any glaring flaws, please let me know. Uh, yeah, Pixelade, that's the idea that Dovetail Games can use the modified signal core in other projects, because, like I said, it can be adapted to any signaling system. All this kind of communication should happen on any route, I would imagine. Alright. So while you guys think of some questions, I'm going to get the first demonstration pulled up. Uh, so far, can everybody hear and see everything well? Now you can see me on the face cam. Yes, um, Ryan, I'll give you all of the signal messages, whatever you need. Alright, so let me turn down the volume on this.
All right. Um, let's just make sure this can be seen. All right, cool. So this demonstration, I'm starting um, two Acellas back to back. There's just a block signal separating us. So the train in front of me is in one block. I'm in another block. And that train is just going ahead. And I just want to demonstrate how the signals upgrade when the train ahead clears blocks and then how the cab signals also respond to that. Frozen Kebab asks, what should I expect from signaling for the AM7? I expect that it will not work properly. For instance, um, let me think. Those only have eight different signal messages programmed in for the cabs. So like if, if I'm trying to display restricting, it's going to show like approach medium in the cab or something. It's the locomotive source files are going to have to be modified. That's why when they were creating Washington to Baltimore, they created custom versions of the Acela and the ACL 64. They're custom versions specific to this route. And I don't, I don't think the AM seven was part of that. If anybody knows if that shipped, let me know. I can see if I can... I mean, if I get the source files, I can modify it. Anyway. So, we start, and there's an Acela going away from us, and we're right behind it at a stop and proceed signal. Now, technically, I can continue through this signal at restricted speed, but I'm just going to chill here. I'm going to wait for it to upgrade to approach. And as you can see, the ADU is restricting to conform because we would have been approaching this stop and proceed signal with a restricted cab signal. Restricting cab signal, rather. Uh, Gerald asks, will these changes apply for the MP36? I didn't get the source files for the MP36, so no. If you operate the MP36, you're going to have some weird cab signaling stuff, so I would just turn off the cab signals, or just ignore them. So let's take a look at the map. So that AI train is about to pass the next signal. Once the end of the train passes it, it'll no longer be occupying that block. And our cabs, I mean, excuse me, this signal gets upgraded to approach. As you can see, remember that glitch I told you about before? If the train's not moving, the cabs don't upgrade. Oh, there we go. See? As soon as I start moving, boom, they upgrade to approach medium 45. And that's correct. And as soon as we pass this signal, they're going to downgrade to approach. And there we go. And it shows the proper signal speed now of 30 miles per hour. If, um, if the sound of the simulator starts to drown out my voice, please let me know, and I will tweak it. Alright, so we're just going to cruise along, keep an eye on this other AI train. So it's almost at Bowie. Once it clears Bowie, that will become a stop. The one I'm approaching will become an approach. The block point in between will become approach medium 45, and then my block will become clear. So once that the end of that train clears Bowie, which will be right now, you should see my cabs upgrade to clear. Boom. And they do. Right away. Mid-block. Upgrade to clear. And at this point, when I cross that next block point, the cabs should downgrade to approach medium 45. So I'm just going to preemptively not exceed 45 right now. Let's see where that train is. It cleared Bowie entirely. All right. So Bowie is still a stop signal. As you can see, we got a drop. Because we're just a couple blocks away from the, uh, a few blocks away from the stop signal. 
So we're just chilling at approach medium 45, waiting for the train ahead to make more progress. Once it clears this set of signals, that'll become stop. Bowie will become approach. And the signals I'm approaching will become clear. And then the block, uh, the block point in between will become approach medium 45. If that train ahead clears that signal, oh, well, it's about to. So I should get upgraded to clear once his ass passes. Boom. Immediate upgrade to clear. So I should be good for a little while. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to accelerate like normal. Oh, sorry, aeronautics. I thought it was Bowie. Not buoy. Okay. Kind of like Baba Booey. So, stop. And I'll say buoy. <laughs> buoy is that approach. I'm at clear. And once I pass that signal right there, that block point, if the Acela has not cleared that next signal, I'm going to get a drop to approach medium 45. So I don't know. Who's going to get there first? It looks like me. But as soon as his ass passes that signal, I'm going to get bumped right back up to clear. So watch. Let's see if it works. So I should get a drop to approach medium 45. I'm going to start breaking suppression. As soon as that train passes, I should get a go back to clear there we go look at that guys see how that's working pretty sick right any questions on this this is very very basic signal progression type stuff for this area No cab speed. Not in this area. Not as a uh, slowdown signal. That's, um... That's mostly... The, well, you'll see that for 80 mile an hour crossovers. Down here. Um... And you'll see it a lot up here. Yeah, 562 territory. You'll see that a lot up here where I live. Between New Haven and Boston. Because you have more than... Three code change points in sequence up here, you're never going to have more than two. So, I wouldn't really call it 562 territory down here, even though it kind of is. You do have block points without fixed wayside signals. Um, but I wouldn't really call it that. Um, frozen Kebab, you're going to have to ask Evan Powers. That's his project. I was just helping out with the track and other consultation type stuff. All right, so what I want to show you guys next is a real life comparison. Real life, like this is the real shit. The game does real life now, okay? So for those of you who have not seen my live streams of development for the extension to Philadelphia, this is actual cab ride footage from a SL Express geometry train. I'm going to explain every step of the way what the train's doing, what kind of cab signal it received, um, how it's responding in response to that cab signal, all that kind of stuff. So just to set the stage, this train is between West Baltimore and BWI. It's at milepost 99.3. Uh, there's distant signals here. Sorry, um, these are just block signals. And there's a Mark commuter train in front of this one. Currently, it is between Hailthorpe. Let me know if I pronounced that wrong, too. <laughs> I'm not from this area, so I think it's Hailthorpe. And BWI Airport. So it's somewhere between there. So we have a clear signal here, a clear wayside signal. There's a temporary speed restriction currently. So that's why the train's going 60 instead of the prescribed... 90 for this curve.
So he passed that block signal that's displaying clear. He has clear 125 in the cab. Everything's fine. Everything's normal. Things are about to change. Once we finish this demonstration, I'm going to go through the exact same thing, but in the game. So there's a code change point coming up. You know that it's a code change point because you got the little signal relay hut right here. I know you can't see my... Actually, you can see my mouse cursor. Good. And you can see the track circuitry right here, that stuff in the tracks. It's called an impedance bond. You can read up all about it on your own if you want. But basically, it electrically separates signaling blocks on a railroad. So you'll notice that the train is slowing down. His brakes are in suppression. He's He slowed down from... 80 and now he's going 60 so what happened is once he crossed into this new block the cab signals dropped to approach medium 45 why did they do that well it might be tough for you to see currently but the next signal up ahead is an approach signal the block before an approach signal is going to be approach medium 45 so that's what happened he went from clear to approach medium 45 and now he's at a wayside signal displaying approach. Now when he crosses the threshold of this signal, the cabs drop to approach, and he can't exceed 30. That's why he's going 30 right now, because the cab signals that that's always permitted to go. So he's kind of just coasting along right now. He knows that he's following a train, because he's late. This guy's a half hour late himself, and the commuter train that he's following, who he would normally proceed, is also running late. For some reason, I'm guessing a mechanical issue because this train's going slow. The commuter in front of him. So he still has an approach signal in the cab. And just now, he's getting that upgrade to clear. Straight from approach to clear. You know that because his speed is now exceeding 30 miles an hour. He's getting over 30. Now, it could be an upgrade to approach medium 45. Could be. However, he's accelerating far too quickly, and he's going to go above 45 miles an hour. Right there, he just 46, 47. You know he's got clear in the cab. He's about to pass another code change point right here. Code change point. There's two between that set of block signals and Hailthorpe. Only a couple spots that have two consecutive code change points. Uh, still accelerating. It's going 70 miles an hour right now. Still has clear in the cab. Clear 125. So everything's good. Almost at 80 miles an hour. 81, 82. That's how you know he's got clear in the cab. Because if it was cab speed, he wouldn't be able to go past 80. Um, another code change point he's just passing. So he's about to hit 90 miles an hour. Oh. He's pulling off, and he's braking. So the brakes are in suppression right now. 83, 82, 81, 80. So he's braking. What happened is this block that he just crossed into is approach medium 45. So that's what happened. His cabs dropped from clear to approach medium 45. And take a guess why, because we've already seen it. Because this bad boy is displaying approach. Remember I told you the block before an approach signal would be approach medium 45 for the cabs. So this guy's like, yeah, I'm chasing signals at this point. I'm not even going to bother accelerating as aggressively as I was. He's just coasting along. He could be going 30 miles an hour right now if he wanted to, but he's going 22. He's like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just chasing signals at this point. He's going to... Take it easy and just chill. So once he crosses that signal, boom, cabs drop to approach, signal speed of 30. I'm going to skip through a little bit because this pretty much stays the same for a little while. Everything's staying the same. Approach in the cab. Still going the same speed, 22. He's about to reach the next code change point. This is right before milepost 105. Getting pretty close to uh, BWI Airport. Very close to the Mark train. So, 
at this point, the next set of block signals is displaying stop and proceed. He's now that in that block right before that signal. So his cabs drop to restricting. He's not exceeding 20. He's not allowed to exceed 20 at this point. And you can see he's going 19. All right, so he has restricting in the cab. Now, in order for him to get an upgrade of some kind, the Mark train is going to have to clear some blocks. Um, yeah, it's stopped at BWI for a while, and it's taken its time getting through. However, in a few moments, not going to be much longer, that train will have cleared the next set of block signals. The block signals ahead will upgrade to approach, and then this block will upgrade to approach medium 45 as a result. Make sense? So as you can see, now he's getting above 20 miles an hour, 23, 24. He's accelerating fairly slowly because he still figures he's chasing signals. And you can see he's got another approach signal here. But, I mean, he's almost at the BWI platform, so whatever. Not a big deal. And that's it. That's what was going on in the cab when you're following a train in this territory. So now, let's do that exact same thing in the game with all this new signal scripting. It's pretty cool. And I'm excited to show you. That's all we ever want when we play this game is to have a realistic experience. So we're, we are this Acela from the video. We are this Acela now. We're starting at milepost um, 99.3. We had clear. We're going to go that 60 miles an hour around this curve, just like that other video. I'll zoom in a little bit. There we go. All right. So then we'll start accelerating a little bit because he's out of that temporary speed restriction. And in the video, that train was going about 80 miles an hour by the time it got that drop to approach medium 45. Now we're about to reach that code change point. It's right here at that little curve. And you're going to see it happen. Boom. Approach medium 45. Throw the brakes into suppression. Because we're coming up on an approach signal. Now I have to keep my brakes in suppression until I reach 45 miles per hour. At that point, I can release the brakes. So boom. Release the brakes. Start coasting a little bit. Look ahead. And just like in the video, that signals approach. So I'm gonna preemptively start braking for this. Because once I pass that signal, I'm gonna have to start braking to 30, so why not do it a little bit beforehand, you know? Passenger comfort and all that. And there we go. Cabs drop to approach. Let's see where this uh, Mark train is. It's still, it's between Hailthorpe and BWI. It's almost past these block signals here. I can expect once the train is crossed those uh, block signals, something's gonna happen. <laughs> I know something's gonna happen. Boom. Got an immediate upgrade to clear, mid-block, as soon as that train cleared that signal. So we'll start accelerating. And remember in the video, the guy, the engineer, accelerated pretty quickly after getting this upgrade to clear. 
He was going 90 by the time he got the next drop. Not at this block point, but at the one in 0.8 miles. So I'm going to try to be going 90 by the time I hit that, without accelerating unrealistically. Is this all making sense to you guys so far? The chat's been kind of stale. Alright, let's get a little bit of extra speed. Let's see if we can get up to 90 before I cross that code change point. Should do just fine. Boom. Immediate drop back down to approach medium 45. Throw the brakes into suppression. Now take a guess what signal's next. Just like real life. That's right, that's what I'm trying to do for you guys. Not just for you guys, for myself. I want to get enjoyment out of this game too. <laughs> So as you can, hey, it's hard for you to see. It's even hard for me to see right now. But that next signal is definitely approach. And you'll see that momentarily. Cabs drop to approach. I'm just going to coast along, just like that other engineer did. I know I'm chasing signals. This is the boring side of uh, railroad engineering. So, Dr. Aeronautics says, a bit unrelated, but has there been any talk of fixing the PRR catenary H pole dimensions? Uh, you're talking about these? These types of poles? I haven't heard any talk about fixing them, though. No. I don't even really know. Are, are they that wrong? They seem... I mean, they seem okay. I'm not. I'm not overly familiar with this area, so if there are legitimate things that could be fixed, bring them up. All right, let's take a look at where this train is. He stopped at BWI. I'm less than half a mile away from the next block. It's not the block that the train is occupying. It's the block before that. But this signal... is displaying stop and proceed. So when I enter its block, right around here, my cabs are gonna drop to restricting, just like in the video. So that train is just now leaving BWI. And we're almost at this next block. And you should see the cabs drop to restricting. And there we go. Now that train has to clear this next set of block signals in order for me to get an upgrade because oops sorry because once that becomes a stop at once he crosses it this will become approach and then my block will become approach medium 45 so that's something I don't know Noah I don't know 
if all of these block points were here in the Penzi days, or if they replaced old existing uh, old signals. You know what I mean? I know a lot of these code change points have been replacing actual wayside signals. All right, so that train just crossed, and you can see I got an upgrade. You know, kind of missed it because I was uh, in the map. But I did get an upgrade to approach medium 45. Just like in the video. Pretty cool, right? Exactly like the video we just watched. Exactly. And I had to respond the same way that the engineer did in that video. Pretty freaking cool. To actually see it happen the same way. And then once he clears the next signal, this one will upgrade to clear. But I don't think I'll... Yeah. I won't be, uh... He won't be there in time. So I'm gonna be dropping to approach. But once he does cross that next signal, then I'll get another cab signal upgrade. Now the interesting thing about this, and now you're going to see the limitations of the game engine, is once he clears this signal, you would expect my cabs to immediately upgrade again to approach medium 45. Actually, no, maybe clear. Clear, because that signal will be approach, then we got a block point, which will be approach, yeah, clear. But it won't. The reason for that... Ah, shit. Maybe it will. Remember I explained in the PowerPoint the, um, the, the limitation where you have to be 0.78 miles or closer for these upgrades to take effect? Well, I just got within that range on this signal. But let's say that the uh, train, the AI train, passed that. See, I got clear, by the way. And I was further away from that signal than I am. My cabs would stay at approach until I got within that range, and then I'd get the new code. So, th that's why it helps to have these code change points added into the root node, is because you get that really close, tight signal spacing, so that game engine limitation isn't really much of an issue. Anyway. Any questions on this before I demonstrate a career scenario? My favorite career scenario that I made with um, all these changes. It'll be in an ACS 64 this time. Any questions? I'm going to turn down the volume a little bit more on the game. Yeah, no problem, aeronautics. And that's just a small little bit. You'll get to see. Uh, you'll get to see more of it. You're gonna get to see the the Washington side of things now, like leaving Washington. So you get to see the different signal types, the the BNO, Baltimore and Ohio signals. So let's get this scenario started. I'll answer any questions as they come in. I'm glad you're impressed, Gerald. Four months of work. Oh my god, if I filmed all my whiteboarding sessions trying to figure this stuff out, you would be like, holy shit. It was that intense. <laughs> okay, so we spawned into Washington. All the signals within Washington, just like New York Penn, will give you restricting in the cab. So this is a slow clear signal restricting in the cab um there's other types of signals too i mean stop you know obviously um this is clear the white light above means clear so that'll give you clear in the cab um again clear that's just a normal clear signal in other scenarios you'll see 
like slow approach, approach slow, stuff like that. This one doesn't have those right away. But I did include a protect set in here. So you have to go around the protect engine. So the cabs default to restricting and they should be restricting all throughout here until we reach a clear signal at one of the uh, bridges it should be restricting yes baltimore and ohio signals yep so for some weird reason amtrak has still opted to use these old baltimore and ohio signal types and they work with the cab signaling system and everything um this is slow clear stop obviously then you got these ones mounted on a pole and in this case this is slow clear because we're going to be switching through at 15 miles an hour so but if we were continuing straight that little white light up top would be illuminated and then it would give us clear in the cab if you got this if you'd had like yellow with the white dot on top that's regular approach if you had it without the white dot it's approach if you have green with the amber in the top right, that's approach slow. Yeah, so they're very, very, very unique aspects and they all work and they all communicate properly with all the other signal types. So if you and a custom route wanted to just do some weird ass uh, mishmash of this signal followed by um, a color position light signal, followed by a pedestal signal, followed by a dwarf signal, they would all communicate properly. And that's one of the other cool things is you can use these signals in any which way because they're all designed to talk to each other, which is awesome. So now we're coming up on a clear signal. You can see that white light above the top. Once we cross that, the cabs are going to upgrade to clear. And you can see they did. You'll also notice that access is now the system enforcing the speed of 15 miles per hour. Clear is typically a 125 mile per hour aspect. So because we're limited to 15, which is less than 125, positive train control is enforcing that lower speed. So I made sure that that's working. Um, Debot asks, why are the overhead lines green? These are older catenary wires, and they have oxidized over the years. If you've ever seen the Statue of Liberty, it used to be copper. I mean, it is copper, but it used to look like fresh copper. Now, it's all oxidized and green. Same thing happened to these wires. Good question. Oops. Accidental wheel slip there. <laughs> I hate that. I hate that I try to accelerate and I get wheel slip. Alright, so we're getting out of uh, Washington and we're getting onto the main line. Still getting wheel slip. I hate that. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> in the background, I have uh, just a, a lo-fi playlist, copyright free music, so I can still monetize this video after the fact. And uh, yeah, one of them, it was like a, a Christmas lo-fi song or whatever, so that's what's playing right now. Um, I don't know how often they replace the catenary. I know that if it gets torn down, they replace it, but... I don't know how often it wears out. It's a good question. Alright, so now we're really accelerating out of Washington now. Still got clear in the cab and everything. Oh, I didn't read to you guys um, the description that I wrote for this scenario. So, 
It says, operate Northeast Regional number 172 from Washington to Baltimore, making intermediate station stops at both New Carrollton and BWI Airport. Various tracks are out of service due to routine maintenance. So it's very nondescript. Um, you as a player don't know which tracks are out of service. But, if you are familiar with the area, you can kind of gather that it says we're stopping at New Carrollton Track 3, and we're currently on Track 2. You can take a guess that there's probably some track work being done around New Carrollton or Seabrook. Yeah, I think the wheel slip in the game is a bit much. And this locomotive in this game doesn't have the amount of acceleration that it should have at higher speeds. Yes, this scenario is already in the game. It's called Maintenance of Way. The one scenario that they had to cut was the Mark scenario called Game Day. Yeah, I work on Train Some World Roots. Not too much yet, um, but I made I made Boston to Providence. That's coming out pretty soon. It's part of Train Some World 2 Rush Hour. That was my route that I made back in 2019, and I sold to Dovetail Games, and they finished it up. And I've been working with them as a consultant, helping them with stuff like signaling and some route scenery here and there. Yeah. I'm going to be doing some more Train Sim World 2 stuff in the future. Take that as you will. Alright, so we're coming up on the distance signal for Landover. We're getting approach limited. So I put the brakes into suppression. I acknowledge the alarm. We've got approach medium 45 in the cab, which is perfect. ATC is enforcing the speed. This is all perfect. This is correct. This is how it should look in real life. So we're going to be switching tracks up here at Landover. It's a 45 mile an hour crossover. Frozen Kebab says, did Mark refuse to have their trains appear on the train sim? Yeah, so they didn't allow Dovetail Games to use the logo. So they couldn't come to a licensing agreement. <laughs> I'll never stop advocating for Northeast Corridor stuff. It sells well. It's extremely popular. Oh yeah, I love it. I'm passionate about it. And hopefully now, with these scripts, um, they can do some great stuff with it. Because you can take... I've commented out these scripts really, really well. So you can take the logic behind these scripts, like how they actually work, and adapt to that logic to Transom World 2. There's no reason why you couldn't. I'm not saying a direct copy and paste of the programming. I'm saying, like, hey, when this junction changes, check how many trains are behind you, and then do this and this. The steps are the same. So we just passed a limited clear signal, and the cabs stay at approach medium 45. And we're switching tracks right here at Landover. And when we exit the interlocking, the cab signals will update. What they update to will depend on what's coming up next. Hey, Sean. Doing good, man. All right, so we left the interlocking, and the cab's upgraded to cab speed 80. Why would that be? Why would we randomly just get cab speed 80 out of the blue? I'll tell you why. And I don't know if we can go down this far. Yeah, I can I can get you. All right, so you can see we got cab speed at Carol interlocking. It's very difficult to see. I, I'm that's better. All right, now I'm, I can get closer now. So, that's an 80 mile an hour crossover. So, we're going to be switching at Carol at 80. This signal is sending back cab speed 80. This code change point is relaying cab speed 80 to this code change point that we just passed, which is dis 
and then it passes it back, and then it passes it back. And then it, we got it all the way back there. So it's because we're going to be switching tracks ahead. That's why it, instead of bringing us back up to clear, we're at cab speed 80. Kind of confusing if you don't understand signal progressions. I really got to start braking. Now I'm actually doing pretty good. All right, nice. It wasn't too long ago, Kebab, that this was called Railworks. I mean, those were the days, man. That's when I started. Uh, Sean Graham asks, Would be nice to see more Canadian passenger service in Train Simulator and Train Sim World. Do you think they will ever get any in the games? Um, I wouldn't imagine anytime soon. Especially given how bad Oakville Subdivision went. I mean, that wasn't exactly passenger, that was freight focus, but holy crap, was that a blunder. Holy crap, was that a blunder. So I don't think they're going to be touching anything Canadian anytime soon, that's just my personal opinion. No inside information tied behind that statement. Yeah, it was a mess. So, getting back to the scenario, you can see here that they're doing some track work at New Carrollton. Um, I mean, I used the best models I could to indi indicate that they're doing work. Looks like they're just standing around, I know, but hey, they're doing some track work. Alright, so track three is the only one that's open right now. And because we're going to be switching back to track 2 at Carroll, we've got cab speed 80 in the cab, which is completely realistic. Exactly how it would happen in real life. Almost done loading passengers. It was a little bit early. Actually, I wasn't early. It's just taken a while. There we go. Conductor says 172, okay to go. Yes, so this area of track is on a 1% grade. That's why it takes such a while to uh, accelerate. Yeah, all of, I, I laid all this track back in September of last year. Yeah, so we're going on a year for, oh my god, it's been a year already since I've made this route? shit um yeah so these are all values from actual track documents and everything all the track all the curvature everything people they love they love the track in this route they just hated the signals so i'm like come on i'll fix the signals so here we are it's good stuff it took a lot of my time was very stressful at times didn't have much of a life for a while but, uh, but I got it done, I learned a lot, and I'm happy for it. Alright. 
So the cab's upgraded to clear, now that we've left the interlocking. That's another thing that I fixed. When you're switching tracks in older train sim routes, you switch tracks, you got whatever approach medium in the cab, cab speed in the cab, you switch tracks, there's no signal to upgrade you back to whatever the current block conditions are. So, having those code change points at the end of every interlocking, that's what happens in real life. Your cabs get upgraded. You are now in a different signal block. So, that's why they're all there. And they work as designed, as you can see. Zoom back a little bit. I feel like I'm zoomed in a little too much. There we go. So if you read the introductory text to the scenario, it said that there was ongoing track work at New Carrollton, and there may be some anticipated delays due to some work at Bowie, sorry, Bowie, I'm learning, <laughs> Bowie State. Um, so who knows, we might get some kind of weird slowdown at uh, Bowie. Right, let's take a look at the chat. So, Kebab says, the whole route between Washington and Philadelphia has the same voltage and wattage. Yes. Yes. To my knowledge, everything south of New York, New York to Washington, is all that older PRR um, electrification infrastructure, which they are upgrading, by the way to accommodate the higher speeds, I think. Oh, shit. So, just got a cab drop. I kind of got spooked by that a little bit. I was reading the chat. Um, but I designed it, <laughs> so... I don't know why I'm that spooked. So we... got a cab drop to approach medium 45, which I am complying with. Here's some of those unanticipated delays. Alright, look. Yeah, now we have an approach signal. That we creeped up on pretty quick. Cabs dropped to approach. We're still in suppression. We're meeting all the requirements. So we're going to continue decelerating all the way till 30. Okay, release the brakes. Yeah, so what they did in the New Brunswick area is... I think all they did was constant tension catenary. I don't think they increased voltage. Alright, so we're just cruising along with a cab signal of approach. Coming up on our next block point. Let's see what's going on on the map. Ah, so there's a train coming on track 3. We are routed to go down track 3. That's why. We got a stop signal coming up at Bowie. Yeah, Noah, that's the implementation that Dovetail tried doing, too, for Washington to Baltimore. They would use the second link... Oops, one second. Come on. I braked properly. Give me a second, just to recover this. There we go. Sorry. ATC tripped up on me. 
Um, we entered that other block and we got bumped down to restricting because the next signal is a stop signal, so that's accurate. It just didn't handle the way I had expected. Um, yeah, so Dovetail Games actually did that, Noah, where they would use the, s the actual link of the signal and when the train passed that link it would change, but it, it was flawed. It was really, really flawed. I'm sure your implementation was better. I found it better to have a dedicated signal for all code change points. It, it works really, really well. Right, so if we look ahead, that train is going through the interlocking. We're going to be switching to his track once he clears. There we go. See that? Our cab's just upgraded to approach medium. So, once our train has gone 500 feet, or one train length, then we're allowed to increase speed. So, it should be good now. So, we're authorized to go up to 45 right now. We're assuming that we're going to be switching tracks here at 45, and everything will be good. There goes an Acela by my house. I don't know if you heard any of it. Probably, it's so damn loud. Alright, so we got limited clear. Yeah, so we're good. Sounded like whispering. Oh, yeah. It's probably because of the noise suppression stuff I have configured on the mic. It cuts out some of it, but some of it gets through. Cabs upgrade to clear. Yeah, uh, sometimes it doesn't slightly shake. Sometimes the house shakes considerably. But uh, they recently tamped the uh, the ballast outside the other night. They had the tamping machine right out there on the switch at like two in the morning or something, and they were going at it. So that helps. Tamping the house. I mean, sorry, tamping the ballast makes the house shake. It makes it vibrate. It's like... Like, it's crazy. Oops, I did not sound the horn for the work crew. I wasn't paying attention. I was taking a sip of my drink. But yeah, there was a work crew right there at uh, Bowie State. So... Normally, I'd sound the horn. So now things are pretty much normal. For the rest of this run. Except, you're going to be doing a move up ahead from track 3 to track 1 at Grove. <laughs> Well, kebab, I'd probably do that too, but I also live on a busy street, so... It'd be nice if I was alone out here, but there's just so much activity around in general. It's just not all that pleasant to be outside. It's very noisy.
Does anybody have any questions right now while we're just cruising along, waiting for the, uh, the next signal downgrade? It should be in a few minutes. <laughs> the mantra for the past year and a half, it's not that pleasant to be outside. Eh. I don't know. A lot of people got really down about COVID. I didn't really care. I, I more stick to myself, uh, my, by myself anyway. And uh, my house is my favorite place in the world. So it hasn't been all that bad for me. That's something I want added. Definitely, Noah. Different speed limit classes. Not just one for passenger and one for freight. You gotta have type A, type B, type C, type D, type E, and then based on the type of consist, you choose that speed set. I even talked to them about it for Transom World, and it just does not on the cards right now. Alright, approach limited. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed lockdown. I didn't mind it at all, I'll tell you. I didn't give a fuck. Lock me up. I wear a mask, I don't care. I'm in the military, we gotta wear these freaking giant chemical gas masks that are hard to breathe in. A little cloth mask is nothing. Yeah, everybody had their own difficulties with it. It's pretty much over now, though, right? Unless this Delta variant picks up steam. I don't know. Alright, so we're at 45 miles an hour. Release the brakes. We'll uh, make our diverging movement at Grove. And then we will proceed on to BWI. In general, I don't really find living next to the Northeast Corridor rough. I mean, yeah, like, right in front of the window that's behind my television. Like, 75 feet from that window is an 80 mile an hour switch point on 150 mile an hour territory. So these trains, they fucking come and they pound, they pound that switch. They pound it into the ground and it just vibrates through the street and into the house and everything and it's worse than it normally would be to live next to the tracks because of that switch point. That's why they gotta come and tamp it all the time. To make it a smooth ride. Alright, so we switch tracks here. There's a uh, Mark commuter train waiting at the north limits of Grove waiting for us to cross over so it can proceed through. Once we clear the interlocking, the cabs upgrade to clear right away. Perfect. And we're on our way normally to BWI. We're past all of the track work. This is part of the reason why the scenario is my favorite. It's unusual, but realistic. Like, it's unusual to switch from track 2 to track 3 to make a stop at New Carrollton, and then switch back to track 2, and then switch back to track 3 at Bowie, and... I don't know. I just thought it was an interesting, yet realistic way to get people to follow their signals, and to just take a look at the route a little different way, you know, see the scenery in a little bit of a different light. <laughs> I 
how close to buoy do you live, Aeronautics? You gotta live like a half mile away, if not closer. That's crazy. About a half mile. So the one thing I haven't shown you guys yet is how the pedestal and dwarf signals behave. So you'll see a little bit of that as we get closer to Baltimore. I'm gonna get some more water in a little bit. I'll make it to the end of the scenario though. See how good of a stop I can make at a uh, BWI. So Julian asks, are you excited for the Boston to Providence route? Well, yeah, I made the track for it. Well, I laid all the track for it. I should be excited for it. But there's a part of me that's not excited for it. Um, I mean, look at the catenary. When I first saw that in beta testing, I was livid. I bitched and bitched, and bitched, for a couple days, and it made its way pretty high up, and it's getting fixed. I don't know when. I can't really say much more than that right at this moment because it's all still kind of in flux in the works no we don't know when the route comes out yet you guys don't know it's not public but it's the first one to come out in uh, rush hour No, they are not coming out together. That was one of the recent developments, unfortunately. Uh, Boston to Providence is coming out first, and the other two are coming out a little bit later on, which baffles me, because I think Boston to Providence was, it was not the first one to start development, because I only sold that to them in March. So, I don't know. We'll see how it progresses. I made a nice station stop, though. I didn't overshoot the platform. I've been practicing. Made good time, too. Yeah, Gerald, I can't really talk about the uh, inner workings and politics of Dovetail Games. It's just not appropriate. I mean, I know the situation, so... But I can't talk about it. Just know that I'm fighting for us. Because I know... Just think of me as the community representative for Northeast Corridor-related stuff. Yeah. 
We'll see how it goes. Fingers crossed. Alright, so we're almost done picking up passengers here. We're a little bit late because of all the track work. That's normal. That's one thing I couldn't fix. I mean, I have the source files for these Amphletes. I think I do. Yeah, I do. But, uh, I never looked at this. Checking whether it's a high level platform and lowering that instead of the stairs. I, I never looked at it. Sorry, guys. Just didn't have the time. But at least the signals work, right? Haven't seen a signal... A single bug with the signals. Mixing up words now. Yeah, the catenary. It's a mess. Alright, 172. Okay to go. Bob says, please advocate for Dovetail to bring back the Metroliner cab car. I mean, since the work for it's already done, I don't see why they wouldn't. However, they would need to create a route that would use it in order to warrant bringing it back. I don't see them bringing back that crappy section from... New Rochelle to... What was it? Newark Airport? I don't see them doing that again. It was garbage. Complete garbo. There's a nice AI train going by. Making its station stop at BWI. Yeah, I mean, you could barely get to 100 miles an hour in that one section over by Pelham Bay. And that was it. So... I understand why that was the right choice to make at the time. The engine hadn't fully evolved to where they could handle high-speed routes. Now they've optimized things to the point where they can do higher-speed stuff. That's why you've seen the higher-speed German stuff and all that. Um, so, it, it made sense, kinda, at the time, but not really really arbitrary starting and ending points, which I just don't get. Something that would make more sense is New York to Stamford, or New York to Trenton. That would make a lot more sense. But if you're going to do another Northeast Corridor thing for Trainsome World at this point, because next iteration will be the third one, you got to have an Acela by that point. If it's not a DLC for Boston to Providence, then they failed. They should absolutely have it as a DLC in the next six months to a year, in my opinion. If they don't, then people are going to lose interest in the route, and they will have failed. CT Trains in Aviation. Doing good, man. Um, Nick, right? That's your account, Nick? Just taking a guess. I could be wrong. Yeah, it's been been a while. <laughs> Alright, I was right. Good. <laughs> nice to see you around, man. You missed most of it, but you can go back and watch. It was actually, a, so far, a really good stream. Having a good time with this stream.
Yeah, they've got to make an Acela, man. They gotta, gotta fucking do it. It's the one, yeah, it's pretty much the one place where the Acela can go 150. I mean, you got Boston to Providence, it's a 10-mile section from Norton to Attleboro. Pretty much 10 solid miles. And you got the same fucking stretch right here in front of my house. Two miles that way is a 130-mile-an-hour curve. And then it continues, like, eight more miles down right over by Exeter in Kingston. All right. Might get some interesting signal stuff coming up here. So pay attention to the signals, because this is one part that really pissed me off about the original group. This progression up here wasn't working at all. Yeah, I don't know how they're going to do the uh, new Acela. I don't have any reference material for it. Apparently they have a whole new signaling system inside it, like cab signals and stuff. I've seen glimpses, but I don't know how it works. I don't really know how it looks in the cab. Alright, so we're coming up on bridge interlocking, and this is the distant. If you're on this track, it's always going to display approach medium. Because we're going to be switching tracks at 30 miles an hour up ahead. So to prepare you for that move, you get your cabs dropped to approach medium 45. Well, yeah, they should make the first Janicella. Especially because Boston to Providence is set in 2019. That's when I laid the track for it. So the Acela, the original Acela, is still completely relevant. There's no reason not to make it. And that's just my opinion. And they... I've had talks with them. They know that the Acela is the logical choice. They know. It's just a matter of time and resources to actually do it. Yeah, same stops as the regional. Yep. South Station, Back Bay, Route 128, Providence. All right, so we've got medium clear up here at bridge. Just like we should. Now we're about to enter the Baltimore and Potomac Tunnel. The one that they're talking about replacing pretty soon. I don't know if you guys have been following that. It's gonna take like a big swing around. Let me show you. Instead of following this path, they're talking about making it go like up and around like this. And then make it get up to like 110 miles an hour around here or something. I don't know. Yeah, so Pixelade, the reason the signal there doesn't work for you in your copy of the route is because they didn't set a signal speed. They should have put 30 in that little box, but they didn't. Uh, Gerald says, why couldn't Dovetail Games extend Boston to Providence to say westerly? What do you mean? You already have 150 miles an hour. 
on that route from milepost 205 to 195. From Norton, Massachusetts to Attleboro, Massachusetts. That's between Boston and Providence. So you already got the 150 miles an hour. We just need the train. <laughs> So all we're waiting for is the train. Now, when I was creating the route, and I was making the timetable, I included all the acelas in the timetable. What I did, and it was kind of funny, I, I, I was talking to Matt Peddleston recently, I want to get permission to show you guys the old version of the route back from 2019 in Trinsome World 2020. We're going back a couple games. Um, what I had done was I took, six, I think it was six M-Fleets, and then I put an ACS-64 at each end of it. And, and it would get up to like 135 miles an hour or something. And I would program the AI to... Um, yeah. I would program the AI to accelerate super fast. So it kind of matched the Acela times, but not quite. It was enough to get it working on the 24-hour timetable. It's pretty funny to see six amplies with two ACS 64s just zooming by you at like 130 miles an hour. It worked. Oops, shit, going over speed a little bit. Yep. So hopefully I'll be able to share that with you guys at some point on a live stream. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, just tracks, no scenery. Tracks, terrain, and signals. That's all it is. Because they hadn't decorated it yet. I was dorking around with some decoration at Back Bay and Providence. I'd, I'd love to be able to show you guys that stuff at some point. Because I had the whole re um, the Fairmount line. I had the whole Fairmount line completely done. I had the service mode, all playable and everything on the Fairmount line, and the Fairmount line was fun to operate, man. Really, like, start, stop, start, stop. Like, you accelerate really fast, you stop really fast to make these timings at these stations. Fun stuff. The only reason it was cut is because of decoration time. They didn't have the time to decorate it. But yeah, I originally wanted it to launch with two commuter lines fully done. Well, it'd actually be three, because you have Boston to Provi um, the Providence line, the Stoughton line. I don't know if you consider that one line or two lines, I don't know. And then the Fairmount line. Alright, we're coming into Baltimore. I don't know if you got a good look at the pedestal signals, they're all working nicely. train going by. Northeast Regional this time. Approach signal. A little dwarf there displaying stop. Signals are all behaving nicely. One big happy family. Oh yeah, signals all work properly now, Ryan. Ah, so the magic question from Pixelid. When will this patch go live? Can't talk about that yet because Dovetail hasn't confirmed anything about this. I mean, all you guys know is that I'm working on a patch. And that it's going to go to them. I don't know when they will release it, but that's the plan. The plan is for them to uh, release this as an official patch. I don't know the timeline. Unfortunately. But, uh, my deadline is soon. I look at the, the date. Very soon.
Yes. Aeronautics. Boston to Providence is the first of the 13 sections. But, now that I know the limitations of the Trainsome World Editor, that whole plan, boom, right out the window. Let's put it this way. 40 miles of track, or 43 or whatever miles of track, from Boston to Providence, in the older editor, I don't know if anything's changed in the newer editor with this, but two gigabytes of terrain data, just terrain data. The terrain itself was two gigabytes. It's baffling. It, if you include a whole bunch of source assets and then track and then a whole bunch of other stuff, you're talking like five, let's just say this five gigabytes for every 100 miles of track. So in just terrain alone for the whole corridor, you're talking um, like, tw let's just say 25 gigs just for terrain. And then you have to compile the timetable. I don't know if, did you guys see the photos for Boston to Providence? Um, I don't no, actually no 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 it wasn't Boston Providence it was um they posted an article on how they make how they make the um the timetables how they make the timetables so there were some photos in there on like how you have to exit the editor and then run a command line in order to simulate the whole timetable so on my machine and I got a powerful fucking laptop it's got an i9 8950hk um, 32 gigs of RAM. I mean, and I overclocked it quite a bit. This thing ain't a slouch. For that to compile the whole 24 hour timetable for Boston to Providence with every single service, we're talking about all the commuter services, not freight, no freight, just all the, the passenger stuff for a whole 24 hour day, every single move and everything. It would take shit an hour and a half to two hours to compile that 43 mile route timetable times that by 10 you'd get the whole corridor so now you're talking like 10 like half a day to compile a, um, a timetable at least it could probably be more uh, with a route of that size and then if there's the slightest glitch you have to tweak it hope it fixes the problem and then recompile there have been some fixes to the whole compilation thing to where it will tell you and it will automatically tweak things if it can. The one I was using to make the timetable was ruthless. Totally ruthless. It would only tell you, I mean, it would kind of spit it out in the logs if things got screwed up along the way. And you could, if you were quick, you could see it. But after the fact, you'd sift through the logs, see what happened, and then you'd have to try and fix it, hope it fixed it, and then recompile again for another two hours. Um, yeah, <laughs> fun. So that's why long routes do not work very well with Transom World. It's not that it can't handle it. If you make the route, it'll handle it just fine because it loads and unloads tiles as it's needed. So there's no excess memory usage or whatever to have a longer route, just more disk space to store the files on the drive. So... But even a 43 mile route was a bitch. Hopefully that puts it into perspective. Um, but yeah, Pixelate, I haven't submitted these changes to Dovetail yet. I'll be doing that tomorrow. Just gotta clean up some of the script a little bit here. I can show you some of the script. Let me see if this pops up. It should pop up on the screen. There you go. Let me zoom in a little bit. I'll give you a little bit of information. This is just a small piece of it. So when uh, when signals are passed down the line or they get prepared, they send back what state they're in to the signals behind it. So this is for a distant signal or a block signal on the main line. 
And if it receives a message from a home signal that's clear 125 or approach limited or approach medium or whatever, whatever this, if it's one of these, if you're before the distance signal, it will set your cabs to clear. When you pass the signal, it will set your cabs to clear and it will display clear. Oops. And it will send clear back behind. It will send, hey, I'm distance signal clear 125 to the rear. If you have an invisible signal or code change point behind that, um, it receives distance signal clear 125 from in front of it. If you're behind the code change point, your cabs will be clear. If you pass it, the cabs will be clear and it will tell the previous signal that it's clear. And that's how the whole message chain kind of works. Oh, yeah, you haven't even seen it. That's just the aspect interpretations. How to interpret what you should be based on what's ahead. All the core stuff is up here. Here's the uh, mid-block upgrades, continuous cab signal upgrades. tons of internal messages that are passed up and down. If the train starts right in front of a signal, that signal is initialized to prepared. So that's how the whole preparedness chain starts. And it sends that message down the line. Occupation query chain is used to adjust preparedness of future signals when a junction changes at an interlocking. The reply chain sends the message back to the home signal that asked in the first place. Signal existence queries. Basically signals asking if there's a signal behind it or in front of it. That'll change things. How to respond when you get a signal prepared message, whether it's from a home signal, whether it's not from a home signal. This is a lot of shit to consider. A lot of messages going up and down. Yeah, it's brutal. How to unprepare, how to respond to unpreparedness messages. Incrementing occupation and decrementing occupation. When trains enter your, your block and leave your block. Interlocking signals are even more confusing because you got to keep track of when a junction switches zoom out a little bit so all this right here is called when a junction changes at an interlocking all of this most of this i had to recreate from scratch so this is what you're getting guys and you saw how it all worked today. Kinda. If you started digging into this, your head would explode. Just like mine did. Many times. Don't bother learning Lua. Unless you want to make stuff specifically for this game. I'm just happy I got it to work. <laughs> pain in my ass. Is there anything else that you guys want to see? Actually, yeah, let me show you really quick like how I actually placed the um, the code change points real quick. Oh, did any of you guys buy Tehachapi Pass? That newer... Western Freight Route that came out recently. Yeah, it is using an older version of Lua. Te-ha... Wait, how did you say it? I thought it was, like, Te-ha-choppy, or Te-cha... 
Tehachapi? Is it Tehachapi? I don't know, man. I'm sorry. I usually pronounce things really well and I'm cognizant of that kind of thing. But <laughs> a lot of those old Indian names confuse me. Tehachapi? I thought it was Tehachapi. I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you bought that route, I made the career scenarios for it. I don't know if anybody knew that. That was interesting. I'd never heard of that route before they asked me, hey, you want to make the career scenarios for it? Well, okay, sure. I'll make the career scenarios for you. Uh, so I had to come up with some weird shit. Taha Chuppy? <laughs> Stop it. You're, not, you're confusing me. Uh, Devin asks, how's Baltimore to Philly going? I don't know. I haven't worked on it in several months. You'll have to talk to Evan Powers. He's the one leading the project. Um, yeah, so those code change points. Those invisible signals, rather. So when you get into the editor, once this patch launches, you'll find it in here called WB Code Change Point. That's what I renamed it to. And you place it, and it's just got a single link. That's it. You just give it a nice friendly signal name, and you call it a day. There's no link speed or nothing. Hey, Brandon Railfan. Nice to see you. So I've got them at the exits to each interlocking. And you'll see the other ones at the exit here. So that's at every interlocking. And then in areas that have them as code change points, like, oops, let me get myself oriented. Right here. Um, you remember this from the example earlier. So this code change point, remember in the very early example, this is where the cabs dropped to approach medium 45. You got a set right here, and this is all they are. Just place them like this, they got a single link. They're completely transparent to you, except for what appears on the heads up display. And they're controlled by this script here. The script controls all that. So. They communicate just like any other signal. They're actually pretty close to a regular block signal or a distant signal, to be fair. Not very different. Just no wayside signal nearby. So that's why the number of signals in this route went from like 300 to 500. Because of the addition of all those. And they're everywhere. All these code change points. I mean, this is the real deal, guys. This is how signaling should be done on the Northeast Corridor. This is what train simulators been missing for years. And we've got it. It's here. And we've got Winans interlocking. Interlocking exit signals, block signals. Everything. Any final questions? Because I've shown you guys everything that I think I can show. I gotta clean this up in the coming day or so and then send it off to them and uh, we'll see what happens. We'll give it a couple minutes for questions. Does the root auto update or do we have to seek it out and download? So when it becomes an official part of a patch, it will get uploaded to Steam and then it will automatically update if you own the DLC. So, you shouldn't have any issues updating. 
Are these the Stevens Pass tracks? No. I don't think so. I, I honestly don't know. that they What they do what, what sometimes is they take meshes and textures and other stuff from other roots, rename it, and I, I don't even know wh where this originally came from. I wish they would have used the Academy track or something with three-dimensional ties. But I digress. It's not that big of a deal. It doesn't ruin immersion all that much. You can always mod that after the fact, I would I would assume. Has anybody done that? Modded the, uh, the textures of these? I'm sure somebody has. Use the track icon with the gray box. What do you mean? That one? I mean, it all has the same names. Main track, concrete. Yeah, they didn't do a very good job with the switch motors at all. The switch motors are terrible. I wish they used, like, the original Northeast Corridor switch motors, the ones that actually look motorized. Hell, it took me a while... Actually, it actually wasn't that big of a fight. It took me a little bit to get them to make the, um... Impedance bonds, you know, the track circuitry for the upcoming Boston to Providence route. I had them make the impedance bonds, and I was working with the, the guy that was placing all the signals, and I'm like, all right, so... Yeah, yeah, that's almost right. You gotta just make it one circuit, though, and he's like, oh, like this, and he just does it really quick in the editor when you're doing a Discord call. And, like, yeah, yeah, that's perfect, that looks great. Just to make it a little bit thicker, I said, like, oh, yeah, sure, I'll just have the guy remodel it real quick and, uh, add a little bit of thickness to it, and now you got an impedance bond. So... Anything that you can add into the track gauge or nearby the track that actually is functional in real life adds to the immersion, I think. Big time. Oh, there goes another train. Is that in Sella? Yeah, Sella. So. I'm hoping the route comes out pretty good. Boston to Providence. I put a lot of work into it. Hundreds of hours. Where can you get this route? This route, you can get on the Steam store. So if you just go into the Steam store and search for Washington to Baltimore, you can get this. We won't have these changes quite yet. Gotta wait for Dovetail to review them and it'll go through quality assurance really quick and then they'll approve it and upload it. Should be pretty quick because none of the localization text is changing. That was their big concern. They're like, um... So you're not going to have to change any scenario text or anything, right? No? <laughs> I'm just changing the signals. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, that's pretty funny. Any other questions before I get out of here? I'm going to start preparing some dinner for later. Probably going to make some steak and Brussels sprouts or something. Maybe zucchini. I don't know. This has been fun. This was a good couple hours. Most fun I've had on a stream yet. Didn't actually have to make anything. Just show off what I made. Which was different. Alright, if you guys got nothing else gonna screw off so Brandon says my friend and I are making a Southern California route alpha is expected to be out by quarter 421 would you get it it'll be free uh, where's it launching on the uh, Steam workshop is it for this game Yeah, you can uh you can send the link, that's fine. But uh 
If there's nothing else, guys, I had a really, really good time with this. I'm glad that everything worked out as intended. Spent a lot of time on these fixes. I'm really passionate about making sure that the Northeast Corridor is properly represented. I would hate for this route to continue years down the road, completely unforgotten, like a dog left on the side of the road that nobody wanted anymore. Um, I'm glad that it has a second chance at life. And I think this is what the route deserved. So that's why I did it. And uh, yeah. Hope you guys get to play it and appreciate it and make some really great scenarios out of it. I want to see that shit on the workshop. I want to play some of your scenarios. That'd be fun. Now that the route works properly. Hopefully there's no outstanding bugs that you guys find. That would be horrible. Alright, cool, Brandon. Thanks for the, the link. All right, you guys take care. Hit me up on Discord, Facebook. Uh, reply as a comment to this video because it's going to be getting archived. You, you guys know how to contact me at this point, I would hope. All right, thanks, Noah. I appreciate it, man. All right, take care, guys. I'm going to end the stream now.